What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you are doing great on this Sunday, ready to get the scoop on AMC, what to expect on earnings. We're going to go over Sinmark's earnings and kind of compare these two companies to get a ballpark of what at least I am expecting for earnings as well as analyst estimates. Now, I think it's pretty clear that AMC is going to beat the analyst expectations. So I think that's going to cause a lot of bullish sediment overall for AMC in the long-term growth trajectory of the business itself but we're also waiting for a lot of key announcements from adam aaron that we are going to get on monday after hours i should, should say after market closes right after the market closes on monday so that's going to be very important we're going to talk about that compare these two businesses like i said go over something that came out yesterday from lawyer of the apes breaking down this whole apex clearing situation they run you know basically the back end for a lot of different brokerages including td ameritrade and and Weeble themselves. So I want to go over that, why that is bullish for AMC, for the MOAS, for all meme stocks really, and the just basically the future of the market. And finally, we're going to go over the raw data that you guys do need to know revolving around this AMC MOAS situation and just the potential rally that we're going to see after earnings. So let's not waste any time. Let's get into this video. I know you guys are probably busy, so I love and appreciate every single one of you guys for watching these videos and making this all possible so let's talk about it guys amc did close uh friday $41.75 per share, up 4.12% in regular trading, up 0.12% in after hours. So definitely a solid day, closing at the highest points for the day and still continuing to go up another 0.12% in after hours is a great sign heading into Monday because if you want to trade AMC earnings, you have to buy AMC either just shares or calls or puts on Monday, uh, obviously trading day Monday. I don't think you're going to see a lot of activity in after hours then again it only takes a little bit of volume to see a big pop so i think after earnings you typically do see big drops or big pops so we will see that but we're gonna have to wait till tuesday to see how investors really do like this if we continue to see that rally if we just gap straight up or even potentially gap downwards i don't think that is the case we're gonna kind of go over why that is and it is simple because all throughout 2021, if you would have bought AMC on the earnings day or shortly before that, about four weeks later, you would have made a 60% return, a 1000% return, and a 100% return on your investment. So in my personal opinion, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not saying this is going to happen. So always do your own due diligence, come to your own conclusions, all of that good stuff. I think we could possibly see all-time highs if we do see some good things announced. Why do I say that? Because we have low volume at the current moment. Some of the lowest volume we have seen since back in june on a daily consecutive basis as well as that we're getting blockbuster you know numbers coming out from movies we're going to see a beat on revenue and you know i think amc's and adam aaron specifically the the board of the company is going to beat all of our expectations for new growth incentives for the business we already know about the popcorn lines that they're going to be starting that is a very high profit margin business around 80 to 90 percent take a little bit off the top because obviously when you start a business it costs a little bit more so even say 60 or 50 percent profit margin that's a good profit margin if you sell a billion dollars in popcorn you're taking 50 percent off the top that's basically a majority of amc's expected revenue just right there alone off of their popcorn business in stores or in movies or you know home delivery like they have been talking about so we're going to get some clarity on that that will be big as well as just many other things that are going to happen on earnings so all in all my personal opinion we could hit all-time highs but we'll have to wait and see monday will be important to see if we do continue to go up into earnings in after hour after hours or if we do go down a little bit it's really a coin flip i think you're gonna have a lot of people very excited for amc earnings so i think you're probably gonna go up about five percent give or take now let's get into the data so the ortex data is giving us a 16.28 percent short interest of free float these are only estimates so take them with a huge grain of of salt 83.27 million shares that are sold short and the share utilization is at 88 percent and the free flow on loan is at about 20 percent as we currently speak 
so not too much has actually changed so we're gonna get out of you know or text it's basically you know the same data we already know the situation is bullish now watch for the november 19th expiration date to really start to populate because we do have 30,500 calls that are in the money 169,000 calls that are out of the money i don't expect too much activity on the november 12th expiration dates because that'll be next friday that's a weekly expiration date you tend to see a lot of people flock to the monthly expiration dates and if you're somebody that does trade options you're adamant about trading options right now probably not a bad time to do so i prefer just to buy the shares because they don't expire you don't have to worry about any of the extra pressures right i've been trading options for you know about three and a half almost four years now and i still will get a little bit nervous if you're coming down to the wire you're seeing theta eating away your contracts and you just don't know what will happen i always like to go a couple weeks out go to that monthly option expiration date so you're looking at a lot of activity if we do see those formal buyers buying the shares and the options then you will see you know a pretty substantial gamma squeeze in my personal opinion after that obviously december 17th and then january 21st 2022 is the next two biggest dates to be watching for and then ultimately the last thing that we're going to cover is the 13f filings and this is very very briefly if you guys seen yesterday's video then obviously you know the situation here is incredibly bullish most firms are holding on to their positions and the firms that are selling out are selling out of a lot of their put positions as well as very small long positions so incredibly bullish right here not too much to talk about we haven't got any of the big time players reporting like citadel or blackrock or you know vanguard or any of these big guys that we should really be watching for so let's get straight into the situation with the market manipulation if you guys have not seen this already this is very important i want to go over why this is bullish and then talk about sin marks earnings and compare these two companies and give you guys an estimate of what i think the numbers the core hardcore numbers are going to be for amc's earnings so in fact, Apex, by its own admission, was never in danger on January 28th of failing to comply with its collateral requirements. As the amended consolidated class action complaint, the amended complaint or AC, alleges, on March 4, 2021, Rothschild's Apex former president admitted in an interview with financial planning that Apex did not restrict trading as a result of capital requirements, stating that Orpex, or, Orpex, or, uh, uh, stating that Apex had headroom in terms of the capital available on its balance sheet and also had credit lines it could call on. Apex motion ignores its own statements that dramatically undercut the premise of its defense and asked this court to do what no court has ever done. Grant broker dealers, including clearing broker dealers, absolution or blanket immunity for their own misconduct. Apex cannot justify its three and a half hour trading suspension as the evidence provided by DTCC demonstrates. Apex was informed by DTCC no later than 1147 a.m. Eastern that the collateral requirement was lower than previously communicated and within the range found acceptable by Apex. But Apex did not lift the purchase shutdown until 2.55 p.m. Eastern. So there's definitely a conflict of interest here. We can go on and on, go down the rabbit hole of who they're covering for, who they let cover on their short positions, but there's no sense in doing that. This is ultimately bullish because the fact that we now, when we go into the MOAS, when we see major rallies in any of these meme stocks, you're going to have people watching everybody. The SEC is going to be watching Apex. They're going to be watching Citadel. They're going to be watching Robinhood and all these other brokerages and anybody else that is, you know, involved with this because this has already shown a lot of instability and fraudulent activities in the U.S. stock market. The last thing the SEC or anybody else wants is to really have the markets discredited. So I don't think there's really a chance of seeing the buy button disabled this time around when we get to the MOAS. If none of this happened, if we were going through lawsuits if the sec hadn't investigated this then this could probably happen again now i just think it's very unlikely i think it's virtually impossible unless we did go to crazy prices and they literally did not have a choice it looks like in all of these situations these you know broker dealers they had a choice to move these move these stocks to position close only and they did that instead of acting in the best interest of the retail investor or the customer in general so that's why this is incredibly bullish that's something to keep in mind 
It sucks it happened. It sucks that it happens in general, but I don't think it's going to happen just because there's so much publicity on all of this. And that was by Lawyer of the Apes on Twitter. Check it out if you guys do want to. Big shout out to you. Thank you for providing us this piece right here. Now, let's talk about Sinmark earnings and what is actually expected from AMC earnings. So Sinmark, which belongs to the Zacks Legisur Legis leisure and recreation services industry posted revenues of 434.82 million for the quarter ended September 2021, surpassing the Zach's consensus estimate by 4.6%. This compares to year ago revenues of 35.48 million so they even beat zach's consensus estimate and this is not a huge surprise the the estimate for amc the zach's consensus estimate is 768.8 million dollars now i think amc is going to beat this by a long shot because of the other innovative programs that amc has had showing nfl fights or uh, games and showing um you know, UFC fights, doing all of these other things to drive revenue, bring customers into theaters. The list goes on and on and on. I think the revenue numbers are going to be better than anybody does expect. They're also trying to get their profit margins up. And in general, that should be a big thing for earnings. Now, comparing Sinmark to AMC, you can see that Sinmark only has 5,957 screens and AMC has 11,041 screens. And AMC, to put this into context, they have uh, most of the highest grossing theaters. They have a majority. I forget what the actual number is. I think it's eight out of the top 10 grossing theaters AMC owns. So a majority of people, believe it or not, go to AMC theaters over these other theaters. Sin World is the second highest, but they only have 9,500 screens. So AMC is definitely the clear winner here. And if Sinmark with almost half the screens of AMC did, you know, 400 million in revenue without doing anything too crazy to drive customers, I think AMC could easily top $1 billion of revenue for the first time in a very long time that would be a massive massive win for all shareholders for the eight movement and for the moas but what's going to be even bigger is announcements that will drive the fomo buying and like i said guys i do think we could go up about 100 i first said this at about 35 dollars per share so 70 dollars per share retesting all-time highs is really what i think could logically happen especially if we do get that fomo buying that comes back into amc because we are having just such low volume in between 25 and 30 million for any given day even on our highest days only at 82 million and that's where we spike to you know about 44 dollars probably seen short sellers come in and knock us back down to about $40 per share. All in all, guys, we're looking at a major rally potentially hitting all-time highs after earnings. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial planner. So always take these videos with a grain of salt. If you agree with me, then by all means, great. You got some knowledge, whatever the case is. If you don't, provide that down below in the comment section. Let me know. But either way, come to your own conclusions. If it makes sense to you guys, like I said, if you resonate with it, cool. If you don't, you don't. So that's going to be all for this video. If you do want my buy and sell alerts if you guys want to be notified every time i buy amc buy a trade or buy you know stock options and or crypto in anything you guys will be notified right away check that out link for the buy and sell alerts in the description of this video as well as the link for mumu deposit a hundred dollars get up to 350 dollars in free stock you guys can't go wrong by doing that great investment platform and they are actually listed on the nasdaq under tickles tick tick tickle tickle symbol ticker symbol f u t you as well as there's just links for other stocks down there if you guys want to support the channel go ahead and do that i've had a long day work my other job so you guys enjoy the rest of your sunday and i will see you in the next video